Alright, welcome back to Sweetest Monster, um, part three. When we left off last time, uh, I believe it was on the bridge, uh, he was having problems. The main character was having problems with his wife, went out to cool his head. Come to find out, he met a, I keep calling him deity, on the bridge, and she remembers all the kindness that she gave him. Well, they parted ways, Yusuke is on his way back home, and that's currently where we are, and it's where we're going to pick up from. When I return home, chilled from the wind and soggy with rain, I discover that the lights in the house are off. Sally must be asleep. I'm not sure about Melly. For all I know, she could be curled up in her bedroom, curtains drawn, reading a book, or searching the net with her old laptop. Or maybe she's just sitting there, staring at the ceiling, cursing me silently. Dang. I have no idea. I really don't know much about Melly, do I? This is a father who has pretty much ignored his daughter for a long time. How on earth did we become so estranged? We're father and daughter. She's my flesh and blood. But she might as well be a stranger. I wish I could shrug it all off with an oh well, and sometimes I can, but it feels far too pressing right now. Far too depressing, more like. I open the front door and step inside, closing it behind me with a soft click. I don't want to wake anybody up. I even try to stifle the jingle of my keys, though I doubt the small sound would be enough to ro rouse anyone. Rose. Rouse. I'm just trying to be considerate. Some people would call that overcompensating. I lean more towards cowardice. I don't want to get drawn into another row. Or an argument, as they say. I don't turn the lights on. Instead, I grope my way up the stairs in the dark, one hand on the wall and the other on the banister. Sally scolds me when I brush against the wall with my fingertips. She says it will stain the paint. Beige paint. The carpet is beige too. Why did we decide to get carpet to carpet the stairs in beige? It shows every single speck of dirt, no matter how minuscule, and it's tight lips and a tight lipped Sally has to vacuum each and every step, all eighteen of them, every other week. Maybe I should feel guilty for not cleaning the house more often, but Sally does work from home, unlike me. She has more free time. So this is continuing. Besides, she was the one who decided on the color scheme. If she likes beige so much, she can have it, but she's the one who has to deal with it. Damn, I really am cold, aren't I? So much for trying to be courteous. Why did I bother leaving the lights off? I should have just flicked them all on, then tramped up the stairs in my shoes, stamping on each step for good measure. This guy's vindictive. It's a very toxic family, it sounds like. I like to think I'm a decent person, but I'm not always sure. I can be pretty selfish at times. At least Belle likes me. Oh no. I can see where this is going. That might be a small, small consola consolation if I were beginning to doubt whether or not she actually exists. Maybe I've gone insane. Is that where Melly caught it from? It could ruin. In, it, it could run in the family. Great Aunt Clarice was definitely a few cards short of a full deck, given she had all those cats. I let myself into the bedroom. No, not my bedroom. Our bedroom. And shrug out my jacket silently. Sally doesn't stir. I can see her lying underneath the covers, curled up on herself, a lump that rises and falls in the dark. She's lying on the left side of the bed, resolutely facing the wall. Does she still not want to see me? Sally looks younger when she's sleeping. Her blonde hair is loose, free from her bun, and, follow, and falls over her pillow across her face. Her pajamas are slightly cute for a woman one year shy of a forty. A demure white nightgown, like something st a student at Mallory Towers might wear. I don't even know what Mallory Towers is. 
<laughs> All of a sudden, I'm run through with a sharp stabbing sensation. Guilt. I'm sorry for being such a lousy husband, Sally Pally. You deserve better. She doesn't respond, of course. <laughs> she doesn't respond. Of course she doesn't. Apologies don't mean all that much when you forget to say them out loud. And here we are to May 12th, Wednesday. Oh, Sally. Ever the I'm resting bitch face. But she has every right to be considering how he treats her and how they treat each other. The breakfast table is quiet the following morning. Shafts of sunlight divide the table in two. Me on one side, Sally on the other. Melly isn't here. She hardly ever is. I know that, but I still ask. Why isn't Melly here? You know why. Sally sighs, setting her paper, newspaper to one side. It crumples and faces up in a UK... And the face of a UK IP politician splashes across the front cover, distorts it, distorts his head collapsing in on itself. What? It's because she doesn't want to talk to you. I nod, taking another sip of my coffee. Try and play it cool. We're just discussing, we're just discussing the fact that my only daughter probably doesn't love me anymore. Oh my god. Did she already go to school? A nod. And speaking of nod, I'm going to pause for a moment. I just heard my pizza's ready. I'll be back. All right. Pizza's done. Now we continue. So we have a nod. Is this the silent treatment? How mature. Melly didn't need to do that. I'd give her a lift if she wants. Melly School, St. Catharines, is only a short walk away from Wheatfield Juniors. But that's probably why Melly refuses to let me drive her there in the first place. Having a primary school teacher as a father, and not just any primary school teacher, but a music teacher, must be embarrassing, especially when I had the pleasure of teaching most of her school friends only a few years ago. Not that Melly has any friends. If she does, I've certainly never met them. Melly doesn't like asking for favors. She keeps it herself to herself. Especially when I'm around. I can't really blame her for that. Ooh, that stings. Isn't it a little too early in the morning for caustic comments? I apologize. I'll try to re rein my acid tongue in until at least fi half five. <laughs> half five in the afternoon. What the hell? Thank you. It would be appreciated. I laugh dryly as I set my mug of coffee down on its coaster. Sally always gets mad when I forget to use one. Depressing though it may seem, today is a normal day. Sally and I at the table, embalmed in our own respective silences. It's been like this for a good year or so. There's no reason why it should be like this this now, even though the events of last night were so fan fantastical. They may as well have been a dream. Perhaps they were a dream. Nothing seems to have changed. I get to my feet, depositing the cup by the sink. My car keys jingle in my pocket. Man, that face, she always has that face. Well, I'll be going then. Have a good day. <laughs> At least her face changed a little. I like this face. At least it's like semi-normal. Sally's looking at the newspaper again, holding it in both hands so the broadsheet threatens to swallow her whole. She doesn't look back at me. How cruel. What if I got into an accident on the way to work? What if I died? About five people die on the road every day in Britain. Those are indisputable facts. I could be one of those statistics someday. Uh, this man is very self-centered. But Sally doesn't seem to care. 
Maybe she'd be happier that way. I'm sure Melly would. As I walk out the front door, shielding my eyes from the intrusive sunshine, I think about Sally. I think about Melly. I think about myself and I sigh. A deep, self-pitying sigh, which you've been pretty much explaining this entire time. Meeting Belle last night must have been a dream for some form of escapism. I bet most rapidly approaching middle-aged men have fantasies about young girls finding them attractive. What other purpose do those raunchy calendars with half-naked women have, if not for to stroke egos? Sally always says men are disgusting. I must be too, having a dream like that. At least I don't like Marmite. Unlike Sally, now Marmite really is disgusting. They have Marmite in Britain? I thought Marmite was Australian. Although they do have the same accent and everything else. But yeah, I agree. Marmite is kind of like the American version of grits. You either like it or you hate it. Exposed to the light of day, my hazy recollections of some ten hours past are distorted. I can hardly remember what the girl looked like other than the eyes. Those bright burning eyes. I shake my head. It never happened. It was a delusion. A dream of better things beyond my humdrum job and arguments with my wife. I should be old enough now to know better. I should be. But that doesn't mean I am. Like the morning, the day passes without event. My year four group after lunch were particularly obnoxious, and Heather Chambers ended up in tears after Cody Bamber made a disparaging comment about her mother, something along the lines of her being a prosy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, prosy is basically a slang for prostitute. Um, it goes back several decades. But that was fairly standard. You get used to this stuff when you've been a teacher long enough. It desensitizes you. I did feel a little bit sorry for Heather, though. She's a sweet kid, and she doesn't deserve it. I think it must be her red hair. It makes her an easy target. Where do kids even pick up such vulgar language? They're only nine. I didn't go around calling my classmates mothers prosies when I was a kid. I was outside playing with model aeroplanes. Prosies has been around since at least... At least the 70s. I don't know how much longer. Because I've seen it used in some videos and some movies and some era-specific shows. I blame the internet. Of course I do. I'm getting old. And that's what old, all old people do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ruin your eyes watching that TV. It's gonna rot your brain. Ah, to be old. The evening passes in a similar fashion, dull, monotonous, and completely predictable. I see Melly for all of ten minutes when we sit at the dinner table for an awkward meal. Sally tries her best to instigate conversation, but Melly keeps her head bowed, half submerged in an oversized fold of her hoodie, and replies with a vague mmm th mmm. She looks tired and keeps rubbing her eyes. I worry she'll pitch forward and end up face first in her mashed potatoes. I hope she's getting enough sleep at night. That's what she has the melation, melatonin for. Joan Fowler said it would help. Not that I trust Joan Fowler. It starts to get dark. I find myself sitting in the living room with Sally, staring at some insipid show on TV without really watching it, just like last time. Sally and I sit together, but we don't talk. We hardly ever talk. Not unless we have something to complain about. How did this happen? How did we let this happen? Or maybe it's just a case of letting. Maybe it's just what happens all, to all marriages somewhere along the line. The Hallison honeymoon period followed by disappointment, diffidence, and gradual decay. The thought is so depressing, it's enough to rouse me from my sleepy stupor. My, subconsciously sh my subconscious shifts gu guiltily. Guiltily? Is that even a word? I know I shouldn't, but I keep thinking about her. Oh, God. What 
Was I so desperate for something, anything, to save me from this rut that I started hallucinating? There's just no way Great Aunt Clarice's cat could really be a cute, car cute girl. No way. Am I going crazy? Is this what having a midlife crisis feels like? I think so, good sir. And I'll stop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a call it a day for this episode, and probably continue on at a later time. So, yeah, this guy's living a pretty depressing life. It sounds well, not sounds. It pretty much is. The husband and wife don't get along, he doesn't talk to his daughter, he has this deity that has visited him and he keeps, you know, thinking about her and his mind is wandering towards her. It very much sounds like an affair is about to happen. I don't even know if that's possible with a deity. Anyways, I've already seen the warning sign on the videos, which I'll probably slap onto it when it eventually comes to that time because I don't know how much I'm going to be able to show if it does go that route. All in all, uh, I'm kind of hoping they find some way to work themselves out. But again, uh, this is more like a story rather than a choose your own adventure. So we're probably stuck with whatever happens as happens. For now, though, I'll let you go. And I'll see you all in the next, uh, the next uh, <laughs> chapter or episode of this, uh, this series. Until then, cheers.